if you've ever wanted to take loads of different reverb sounds with you to every gig, every studio session, every application possible, but you don't have enough space on your board for a ton of different reverb pedals, then IK Multimedia have got you covered. In this video, we're gonna be checking out the X-Space Reverb Pedal. So the X-Space is one of the new line of pedals from the guys at IK Multimedia. This is entirely reverb. So inside the X-Space pedal, you've got 16 different reverb algorithms, ranging from simple spring and hole reverbs to some crazy shimmers and all sorts of other cool stuff. This is essentially all of the reverbs you'd ever need housed in one pedal. All of the sounds you're hearing in this pedal are essentially the same sounds that you'd hear in IK Multimedia's flagship software, Amplitube, because that's essentially what this is. There's a range of these X gear pedals. There's this one, there's a delay, there's a modulation and a drive one. Each has different algorithms from the Amplitube software, so you can take your favorite Amplitube tones anywhere with you. But the cool thing is you also get a digital license for this, so if you're running Amplitube on your computer, which this also comes with a light copy of, you can actually create patches for this within Amplitube and upload them to the pedal as well. So there's an entirely digital editor side to this as well. This thing does a lot. There's a ton of features, most of which we're not gonna get the time to go over in this video because we'd be here for a very long time because believe me, this thing is in depth. So if you like tweaking with reverbs and you like all those different soundscape textures, this pedal is definitely one that you're gonna to wanna to check out. So before we start checking this thing out, I do have to say I'm not getting paid for this video, but my friends at IK Multimedia did give me this pedal for the purpose of making this video. So let's dive right on in and find out what this thing is about. So as I said, there are a bunch of different algorithms built into this thing. There's 16 different types of reverb. This pedal runs in full stereo, so it's stereo in, stereo out. It's got MIDI functionality and an external control for using with an expression pedal. You can also connect it to your computer via the USB cable that's supplied, which allows you to access the software editor where you can drag and drop presets either through the preset manager for this or via Amplitube. This also doubles as an audio interface, which is pretty cool. So you could use this to connect to your computer and record into your DAW as well. So straight away out the box there, ton of cool features. Comes in this real tough, roadworthy aluminum chassis. This thing feels pretty solid. Uh, obviously it's the first time I came making pedals like this, but these definitely have been designed for the playing musician. So someone who's gonna take these out on stage and perform anywhere they want with them, but with the idea in mind that they're gonna be studio quality effects. So inside here, you've got a lot of DSP processing power. This thing can pretty much handle all of those detailed soundscapes that you'd expect from the Amplitube software. So if you've checked out all the different reverbs in Amplitube, that's pretty much what you're getting here, but in a form that you can take anywhere with you. So for anyone who is new to tweaking reverbs, this actually comes with 50 presets already built in. So that makes your life a little bit easier if you're new to trying to set up some different sounds. You can just kind of go through, find presets that sound a little bit like what you want and then tweak them accordingly, or you can create your own straight away. And there's 300 user slots in this thing as well. So you can store a lot of different reverb presets. I'm pretty sure you're never gonna need 300 presets for a gig, but you never know. You may want to create 300 different reverb presets. This thing's definitely got plenty of space if you do wanna do that. So if we look at this thing close up, there's a lot going on. So we've got three foot switches across the bottom. So each bank has three foot switches enabled. So three different presets there, but you can also press pairings of these to bank up and bank down between the different banks as well. You change your reverb type with this control and there's a bunch of parameters here that you can change as well. Each of the different reverb types has some additional parameters which are controlled via this parameter knob here. Some only have one parameter you can change and others have multiple. So there's some real in-depth editing you can do through the pedal as well. And on the back of the pedal, as I said, we've got full stereo in and out there. We've got MIDI, we've got an expression jack, we've got USB and a nine volt DC adapter. I think IK going for the nine volt option for this was very, very clever because so many companies who make these kind of pedals will use something like a 12 or an 18 volt. And let's face it, not everyone has a power supply with multiple voltage outputs. So if you've got a power supply that only outputs nine volts, 
this is perfect. It really does work well. Most power supplies should be able to power this pretty easily. Even though this is digital, the converters are very low noise. They work at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. So there's plenty of headroom there, plenty of digital headroom to keep all that unwanted noise at bay. If you're worried about a digital pedal affecting your tone, this has a pure analog dry path. So when this thing is off, it's either working in true bypass or what they refer to as soft bypass, which is sort of buffered, but not like a massive change in the buffer. But if you're somebody who doesn't really think too much about that kind of stuff, then I wouldn't worry. Me personally, I've never really noticed much of a difference when I use true bypass versus, you know, buffered versus digital, whatever. If it sucks any tone, you just adjust it at the amp end. It's not too much of a problem for most people. But if you are someone who worries about that kind of thing, there are some different switching options here as well to get you through that. If you choose to connect this via the USB and use it as an interface, it's really geared for guitar recording. So the frequency response to this extends from five hertz right up to 24 kilohertz. So there's pretty much nothing there in the guitar spectrum that this thing isn't gonna pick up. And you can actually use the left and right outputs as monitor outputs as well. So you could run a jack cable to your left and right studio monitors, and this would literally double as a complete studio interface as well as a guitar pedal you can take on the road with you. So that is pretty cool because even if you're on tour or you're away somewhere and you wanna record in your hotel room with your laptop, just plug this thing in and it doubles as an interface. So yeah, that's a really cool additional feature from IK as well. So I think that's probably enough talking about what this thing can do. Let's plug it in now and hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna be using my Vola Oz for this. This is a great guitar for clean and reverb type demos because it's very, very hi-fi sounding. These pickups have got a lot of sparkle to them and I think it translates really well when you're showing things like reverb off. So I'm going from this guitar into the Boss SD1, which I will be using for some drive later on in the video, through the Amplitube X Space. And the amp I'm using today isn't actually an amp at all. It's the Walrus Audio Mako ACS1. So I'm going in full stereo today. So I've got the signals panned hard left and right. So you can hear the full stereo spread of the reverb as well. I've got the ACS running on like a Fender type setting. So here's what that sounds like, completely dry with no reverb from the unit. There's a little bit of room space on the ACS1. So I'm going to start off just by moving through the different models so you can hear how they sound without changing anything. So even though the knobs are set a certain way, the knobs aren't actually impacting the tone right now because this is a digital pedal, so everything's going to default to the preset. So the screen does say the word glitter, so ignore that. That is the name of the preset that loaded up. So what we're looking for here is the different reverb algorithms, which are listed across the underside of the screen. So you can see this number one here, when I change this knob here, which is the algorithm type, you can see that number there increasing or decreasing and the different name of the algorithm showing up. So we're gonna start off just by having a quick play through those. So I'm just gonna play a bit on the neck pickup and just move through those without thinking too much and then we'll start breaking them down and seeing what we can do with each one.
So that was a quick bank through the 16 different algorithms built into the X space. So now we're going to start breaking down each one a little bit more, hear a little bit more of what each one can do. Obviously, there's so much tweakability in this thing that if we really dive into every feature, we're going to be here for a long time. So I'm just going to skip through each one with a couple of different clean and overdriven tones. But first of all, let's just talk quickly about what some of the knobs do. So time is obviously the time of the reverb. So that's the length of the reverb tail. Most of the reverbs can go up to about 20 seconds. So there's some quite big tails here. Pre-delay, this is the time it takes for the reverb to start after the note. So the lower the pre-delay, the sooner the note starts. If you imagine you're in a big hall and you're on the stage and you play something, the pre-delay is the time it takes that sound to hit the back wall of the hall and come back to you. So obviously the higher we set that, the further away the point of reverb bounce is going to be, therefore the longer the reverb is going to take. Color is essentially EQ, so this goes from dark to bright. The mod control is different modulation rates, so different types of reverb may have different modulations attached to them, so we can control it with that. And the mix is the wet dry of the signal as well, so the lower this is, the drier the signal and the higher the wetter. This is the interesting feature of the parameter control. So when I press this control, so for instance on reverb number one, which is shimmer one, if I press this, it opens up a different menu. So shift, size, mod rate, these are the additional things that I can control within this reverb. So this has a couple of different parameters, including different modes. Now there are three different modes to this reverb, which are no pitch, single pitch, or dual pitch. So there's different levels of shimmer I can apply there. Like I said, I can't dig into all of them in one video because it will take way, way too long. So I'm just gonna move a couple of things as I play. So I'm gonna start with some clean tones and then I'll just kick on the overdrive. You'll know when I do that because you'll hear this change in tone. So it's quite obvious when the drive gets kicked on there. So we'll start with shimmer verb number one. I'm just gonna play a bit. I'm just gonna move some stuff and we'll see what it does.
quite a lot going on there with the shimmer verb. Now I'm gonna go over to shimmer two. Now this is different to the first shimmer verb because this time you can separate out the voices and actually harmonize them. So that's pretty cool. So let's just play and hear what this sounds like. That's pretty cool, very kind of synthy and paddy. So let's go over now to the hall reverb. So hall reverb is very typically emulating a hall. Let's go back to halfway. So this is a good example of that pre-delay. If I set the pre-delay all the way up, imagine we're in a really big hall. That's where it hits the back of the hall. If we're in a small hall, the impact of the reverb is immediate. So we get that reverb tail straight away. Hall reverb, always fun. Next up, room, so same kind of deal. This is just a room, so imagine like a smaller version of a hall. So on the hall and the room set ends, the additional parameters are these decay sizes, which are basically like the lower, mid, and high frequency decays. So you can really fine tune how the decay of the verb sounds. Fifth one is chamber. The chamber sound is like a recording studio guitar booth. <laughs>
next up we've got the Church Reverb. Now this has the longest tail because it's church, so obviously we can expect a much bigger room sound here. That's a pretty big delay tail there. Next up, we've got a plate reverb. Next one we have is a spring reverb, obviously spring reverb being a classic amp style verb. Now the real trick with the spring reverb is to see if it actually does that full springy thing very well. Which so far this doesn't seem to quite do. There's like a high frequency thing that you get from a good spring reverb and I don't really feel that this sort of has it. So not really the best spring reverb, but still pretty good. It just doesn't sound exactly like a real spring reverb. Now, obviously when you play spring reverb, there's a very specific sound you get. That gets in the ballpark, but it's not quite. All the other verbs are great up to this point though. So I think we can excuse one that doesn't quite do what it's meant to. So swell is up next. This is what they call a swell processor. So it sort of swells up and then you can really customize the reverb tail. So you've got swell sensitivity in the additional parameters, uh, swell depth, modulation rate, and a high pass filter. So you can really kind of go to town on this one.
that's very, very modulated in the tail end. So there's a lot of interesting stuff you could do with that reverb. Next up, we're going to a gated reverb. So this is a very choppy sounding reverb. This cuts off the tail, great for rhythmic stuff. So you can hear that immediate chop there. So there's probably a way, if we go into the settings, we can adjust the gate. Well, it's not actually. So it's just gonna be pretty choppy. We can extend it slightly with the time control there. So the shorter the time, the more gated that sound is. Obviously this is the maximum the gate can be open. So that's pretty handy if you want a reverb sound, but you don't want any tails because the choppiness there can really sort of cut the edge off. So if you're playing a lead break and you don't want the reverb to overhang. Pretty cool, it's good for that. I mean, obviously if you like that particular sound, Next, we've got reverse reverb. So this is obviously a reverb that is played backwards. So this is great if you wanna get a bit weird with your reverb, because what this does is, depending on where you set the mix, you can hear your regular signal with what you've played just before it flipped around the reversed. So that's pretty cool if you want some really weird reverb stuff going on. And next up, we've got the early reflections mode. Now this is a really cool mode because this plays off that idea of the wall that the reverb is bouncing back to you, at you from is pretty close. So the early reflections mode is kind of like a slap back delay. So depending on where you set the pre-delay, this obviously works in milliseconds. So we can go up to like a hundred milliseconds there. We can get like a pretty cool, pretty convincing slap back type sound. You can just hear that little ping. Pretty cool, I like that one, even on the maximum delay. And with the size or the time maximum. See, there's not a ton of delay time on that or reverb time. Now we're starting to go into some of the weirder sounds. So next up we've got the extreme mode. This is like two different reverbs in one. So imagine a plate reverb that goes into another plate reverb, which is heavily modulated with a phaser. So this is a pretty wacky sound.
Next up, we've got the ethereal mode. So this is again, another plate type verb with some modulated tails, very kind of airy sounding. Next, we've got the bloom setting. So they say in the manual that this adds bloom to lead guitar parts. So let's dive straight in with some overdriven tones on this one. Apparently it makes your lead lines very rich and very noticeable. So the ability to adjust the pre-delay there is pretty fun because obviously you can get some of those kind of analog delay type swells. That would be really cool if you fitted the output of that to the expression pedal because then you could manipulate that in real time. Pretty cool if you want some of those analog kind of swells. It's not going to do the feedback oscillation thing that an analog delay does, but it kind of gets you in the ballpark if you want a little bit of that sound. And the 16th and final reverb is the magnetic reverb. This is what they refer to as a spatial reverb with a very airy and modulated tone. Apparently this creates the illusion of floating through space. So let's play and find out.
So there you go, there is a walkthrough of all 16 algorithms on the IK Multimedia Amplitube X Space Reverb Pedal. Now, like I said, that is not the reverb pedal for someone who just wants one simple reverb sound. This is for people who love different textures. So if you're into different soundscapes, as you heard there, you know, we can get some real crazy stuff going on, as well as some traditional reverb sounds, then this is the perfect pedal. If you want to take a ton of different reverbs with you anywhere you go, this is definitely one to check out. You also, like I said, you can upload the patches directly to your Amplitube because you get a license for a digital version of this. So you can use your X space in Amplitube as well. So if you're recording just straight into your DAW without the pedal handy, you can still use your reverb presets there and you can transfer them back as well. So yeah, very, very cool, very in-depth. And obviously we just skimmed through it there. There's a ton of different parameters and tweaking things you can do. You know, you could spend hours and hours getting lost in what this thing can do with all the different menus and the different settings. If you're someone who doesn't like tweaking controls too much, you may find it easier to connect this to your computer and you know create your presets that way. But again, so versatile, you can do whatever you want with it. Really, all the reverb sounds were great. I, I liked everything I heard. This isn't my first time playing this. There's a video on the channel where I looked at this for the first time at 42 Gear Street in the summer, when this was actually just a prototype. So I actually had the prototype model uh, in the video, not this one, which is, this is actually a final production model. So this is exactly as you will see it when you buy it from the shop. The version I tested out was a prototype, but it still sounded great. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the sounds of that. Still really liking them in this as well. So yeah, ton of great reverb sounds. The only thing that I wasn't really sold on was the spring, but that is partly because last year, or this year I should say, I made the transition to actually using a real spring reverb tank. So, you know, when you hear a real spring reverb, a digital one will never come close again. Uh, but all the other reverbs sounded pretty good. So I think 15 out of 16 is not too bad there. Maybe if you spent a bit of time really tweaking that spring, you'd get it a little bit more, you know, realistic. But to my ears initially, it didn't really sound like a spring, but all the other ones sound fantastic. Shimmer verbs are really cool if you like those sort of ethereal kind of soundscapey things. And that magnetic one is pretty fun. It's not the sort of reverb you'd use all the time, but if you want some, you know, floating through space tones, it's great for that as well. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. What do you think of the tones of the X space? And if you've checked out any of the other X gear range, let me know. I'd love to hear what you think about that entire range. While you're down there, let me know. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much for watching.